Hi everybody and welcome to our Adobe Flex presentation. So Neoloads Flex module is going to allow you to test applications that use AMF technology. And AMF is just a protocol used by certain Adobe Flex applications to communicate with the server. So with the Neoload Flex module, you can record and playback AMF messages, convert the AMF traffic to XML just to make your designing scenarios easier, and then automatically manage the AMF protocol-specific identifiers. So Neoload sits between the browser and the server, capturing AMF requests coming from the browser, and the AMF response is going from the server back to the browser. And during the test, Neoload's load generators replicate the AMF requests and then validates the AMF responses coming back to the server. So now we're going to use Neoload to record a Flex application, in this case a database management system, and then at the end of the recording we'll see how we can modify the AMF requests to make the scenario dynamic and a little bit more realistic. So we're just going to go ahead and start a recording. We'll rename our virtual user, and then we'll create a business transaction. It'll be our home page, and then we'll create another transaction and we're going to enter an SQL request to retrieve information on an employee named Smith. And so Mr. Smith's company employee number is going to be 1 and we'll submit the request to the database using the employee number to find out Mr. Smith's workplace address. We're just going to create a new transaction, search for that address, and then the address will come up in the results. We're just going to stop our recording and go ahead and finish. And now we're going to find an AMF request using the flags. So we're going to go ahead and flag those AMF requests here. And then as you can see here, the AMF requests are identified by a red icon. So we can see the flex binary data converted by Neoload into XML, which makes it easier to understand and modify. So to make things more realistic, we're going to use different employee names in the first request. So we're going to modify the second one to find the corresponding address. So we're going to go ahead and flag requests, and we're going to find the first SQL request in the recording. And here's that request. And now we'll create the variable containing the employee names. We'll do that in our variables manager. We're going to create a list variable. We'll rename it and then add some values. And we're just going to take those values randomly and we're going to change them up for each virtual user. And now we'll insert the users variable in the place of the name Smith used in the first SQL request. And then we're going to extract the company employee number from the server response. That'll be in the advanced settings. And we'll extract the information we need from the XML node. So the XML path is automatically inserted here. So now we're just going to go ahead and extract that company ID. And as you can see, that ID is now extracted here. And so now we're going to inject the company ID variable into the second AMF request. So we'll just come over here and flag the company ID. And then here's the second SQL request in the recording. And the value for the company ID is here. And we're just going to insert that variable and apply. So now that the modifications are complete, we're going to validate the scenario.
Perfect. So now let's look at the first request to see which parameter has been used. So here's the value of the variable created before. And now we're going to look at the SQL request to see how it's used. And then there's the request. So the name is now variable. It's no longer Smith, but Wong, as you can see. Now here's the new value of the company ID returned to the server. It also belongs to Wong. So now we're just going to check that with the recorded response. So we'll just go into our response tab here. And we'll find that the value is the same. So we'll check to see whether the company ID returned has been included in the following request. So here's the second SQL request. So the company ID sent as a parameter is the one that was returned previously. <laughs> Got some French in there, but now we're just going to check the address in the server response. <laughs> And the address corresponds to Wong's workplace address, as it should. Thanks, everybody. That's all we have for you today. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out. Thanks again for following this presentation.